When they first emerged in the mid-1990s, the environmental extremists calling themselves the Earth Liberation Front announced they were the burning rage of a dying planet. Ever since, the ELF, along with its sister group, the Animal Liberation Front, has been burning down everything from SUV dealerships to research labs to housing developments. In recent years, these so-called eco-terrorists have been responsible for more than a thousand crimes, resulting in over a hundred million dollars in damage. And their tactics and rhetoric continue to escalate. Things have gotten so bad, the FBI now considers them the country's biggest domestic terrorist threat. This is the biggest act of eco-terrorism in U.S. history, a fire deliberately set on the night of August 1st, 2003, that destroyed this nearly completed $23 million apartment complex just outside San Diego, a fire set to protest urban sprawl. It was the biggest fire I have ever responded to as a firefighter. Jeff Carl is a division chief for the San Diego Fire Department. That fire was not stoppable. At the stage that the fire was in when we arrived, there were problems in the adjacent occupied apartment complexes. Uh, pine trees were starting to catch fire. Items on patios were starting to light up. And we had to direct our activity towards saving life before we could do anything about the property. Hundreds were roused from their beds and evacuated. Luckily, nobody, including firefighters, was injured. By the time the fire burned itself out the next morning, all that remained was a 12-foot-long banner that read, If you build it, we will burn it. Also on the banner was the acronym ELF. When you saw that banner, what went through your mind? I knew I had a problem. A problem because he knew what ELF stood for, the Earth Liberation Front, the most radical fringe of the environmental movement. It's the same group that set nine simultaneous fires across the Vail Mountain Ski Resort in 1998 to protest its expansion, causing $12 million in damage. And the same group that left SUV dealerships across America looking like scenes from the Sunni Triangle, their way of protesting the gas-guzzling habits of American car buyers. The ELF is a spinoff of another group called the ALF, or Animal Liberation Front, whose masked members have been known to videotape themselves breaking into research labs where they destroy years of painstaking work and free captive animals. In recent years, they've capped off their visits by burning down the buildings. Still, they insist they are nonviolent. For every arson that I've carried out, there's probably been three or four that were not carried out for that fear of injuring somebody. Rod Coronado, a former ALF leader, is widely credited with introducing arson to the cause. He spent four years in prison for setting six fires, including this one at Michigan State University. But why burn a building down? Aren't you putting people at risk when you do that? It's simply because after years of rescuing animals from laboratories, it was heartbreaking to see those buildings and those cages refilled within the following days. And uh, for that reason, arson has become a necessary tool. It's Coronado says the ALF and ELF operate in small, autonomous cells. How many people in a cell? Uh, I usually worked with uh, five or less people. How do you decide, after you've chosen a target, to go about it? I mean, you just can't walk in the door. Uh, those are the types of things that take nights and nights and weeks and weeks of reconnaissance to ensure that you know in the one hour that you're going to take action that there will be absolutely no risk to any living being. The fact that nobody was ever injured in any of the actions that I've been accused of was not a coincidence. Coronado says these days he's simply an unofficial spokesperson for the ALF and ELF. And in that role, he travels across the country giving lectures on the group's philosophies and tactics. This is a crude incendiary device. Plastic jug, which you fill with gasoline and oil. Many in law enforcement believe Coronado is still active in the movement as an organizer and recruiter. He recently found this GPS tracking device under his Jeep, which he believes was planted by the FBI. And he just happened to have a speaking engagement in San Diego 
the day after the fire. So you knew nothing about the fire? I knew absolutely nothing about that fire. But you have gone around the country and, and encouraged people to do this kind of thing. Encouragement through explanation and demonstration of my own actions. In other words, you show them how to set a fire. I show them how I've set fires. I show them how the ELF and the ALF, uh, what their mode of operation is. So you're going out looking for people who will follow in your footsteps, footsteps that landed you in jail? I'm asking for people courageous enough to take those risks for what they believe in. We were surprised when one of those people, a man claiming to be an active ALF cell leader, came out of the shadows to grant what he called the group's first on-camera interview in 20 years as long as we didn't see his face or record his voice. He told us that his cell has conducted operations from coast to coast, and every one of them was what he considered to be nonviolent because nobody was injured. He said under the mask is a normal, otherwise law-abiding citizen, and his friends and family have no idea about his activities. He said he thinks it's abysmal that the FBI considers them America's top domestic terrorist threat because unlike neo-Nazi groups, the ALF has never hurt anyone. Having the FBI chase you around is not a good thing. John Lewis, a deputy assistant director for counterterrorism at the FBI, is the man charged with stamping out eco-terrorism in the United States. How many attacks are we talking about here? Well, we're aware of over a thousand. Lewis says the reason these groups are considered such a threat is because they've caused over a hundred million dollars worth of damage nationwide. And he says there are more than 150 investigations of eco-terrorist crimes underway. Have you caught the people who burned down those buildings on the mountain in Vail, Colorado? No, sir. What about the San Diego complex that was burned down? Um, no, sir. How many of them have you actually uh, Caught. We've had approximately 40 arrests or prosecutions. Lewis says these groups use the internet to pass along information and to take credit for their crimes. He admits they're not in the same league as Al-Qaeda, but he says they're ratcheting up their actions and turning up the rhetoric. There have been multiple statements made regarding uh, assassination and or killing uh, of individuals involved in, for instance, biomedical research and that kind of thing. Case in point, Dr. Jerry Vlasic, a practicing trauma surgeon in Los Angeles, who also acts as a spokesperson for several extreme animal rights groups. Vlasic has told audiences that it's time to consider assassinating people who do research on animals. You said, I think for five lives, 10 lives, 15 human lives, we could save a million, two million, 10 million non-human lives. You're advocating killing people. I think people who torture innocent beings should be stopped. And if they won't stop when you ask them nicely, they won't stop when you demonstrate to them what they're doing is wrong, then they should be stopped using whatever means necessary. Are you going to do this? I'm not going to do that. I'm a physician. My role in the movement is not to go out and do that, but to explain to the mainstream media and to the public in general why these people are doing what they're doing. So you want somebody out there, some impressionable young kid, to go out and kill somebody? I want people who care about animals to do what's necessary to stop their exploitation, to stop their suffering. And, and for someone who believes that the life of an animal is not akin to the life of a human being? Those people are speciesist. Speciesist, he says, are akin to racist or sexist. Animals, he says, should be accorded the same rights as human beings, despite their place on the food chain. It's just like at one time, Black humans were considered property. Well, dogs, cats, and all other animals in our society are still considered property. Who's, who's fair game? Well, I think anybody that tortures animals for a living or for a profit uh, and who won't stop when they're asked to and won't stop. You mean stop these are researchers who are testing, performing tests using animals? Animal researchers, slaughterhouse workers, uh, the head of the corporation that slaughters hundreds of millions of chickens every single year for, for the taste of their flesh to but sell to people consumers. People like chicken. People liked owning slaves, too, okay? That doesn't make it right. Simple as that. It's very straightforward in my mind. We don't live in a country where it's okay to kill people if we don't necessarily like what they're doing. I mean, if we have someone who, who actively embraces this, then what's next? What's next, he says, is the emergence of a lone wolf like Eric Rudolph or Ted Gazinski, something that has already happened. 
These grainy images were taken by a surveillance camera. They show a mysterious bomber planting two sophisticated explosive devices late at night outside a company that makes vaccines in Northern California, a company targeted by animal rights activists. One bomb was set to go off an hour after the first, after firemen and police arrived, but it was spotted by a night watchman. A few weeks later, a third bomb went off outside another company, this one strapped with nails. Anyone within 50 feet of that particular bomb probably would have been killed or seriously injured. The FBI's David Strange is in charge of the investigation. And the fact that, that one was set to go off an hour after the other one, what does that say to you? To us, that indicated it was a, what we call a secondary explosive, and that type of explosive is basically designed to uh, hurt or kill the first responders that show up to the scene. Firemen, police, police, firemen. Firemen, ambulance, yes. H had you ever heard of eco-terrorists using bombs before? This was the first time. Strain says the FBI has identified the suspected bomber, Daniel Andreas San Diego, a 27-year-old animal rights activist from San Rafael, California, who is now a fugitive after he slipped an FBI surveillance team. But he left behind a message posted on websites sympathetic to the Animal Liberation Front. Part of it reads, we will now be doubling the size of every device we make. I'll ask you, why does someone build an improvised explosive device with shrapnel, nails, and, and such, uh, if they're not intending uh, to cause someone a grievous harm, uh, if not worse? There is a definite split in the movement when it comes to violence. After torching a forest research station in Irvine, Pennsylvania, one ELF cell threatened to, quote, pick up the gun. And the title of this animal rights tract says it all. I think it's sort of disingenuous to say, well, we can burn down buildings, but we can't use explosives, or we can use explosives, but we can't do anything that might harm a person. I think what we have to do is look at the big picture. We have to look at what works. The FBI and other law enforcement agencies are also looking at what works. They're winning longer prison sentences for convicted eco-terrorists, and they're pushing legislation in Congress that would make it a crime to threaten violence against any person or institution that uses animals to do business. ...dollars in damage, and their tactics and rhetoric continue to escalate. Things have gotten so bad, the FBI now considers them the country's biggest domestic terrorist threat. This is the biggest act of eco-terrorism in U.S. history. Jeff Carl is a division chief for the San Diego Fire Department. That fire was not stoppable. At the stage that the fire was in when we arrived, there were problems in the adjacent occupied apartment complexes. Uh, pine trees were starting to catch fire. Items on patios were starting. When they first emerged in the mid-1990s, the environmental extremists, calling themselves the Earth Liberation Front, announced they were the burning rage of a dying planet. Ever since, the ELF, along with its sister group, the Animal Liberation Front, has been burning down everything from SUV dealerships to research labs to housing developments. In recent years, these so-called eco-terrorists have been responsible for more than a thousand crimes resulting in over a hundred million dollars. Fire deliberately set on the night of August 1st, 2003, that destroyed this nearly completed $23 million apartment complex just outside San Diego, a fire set to protest urban sprawl. It was the biggest fire I have ever responded to as a firefighter.